this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make a basket weave blanket today uh, this video uh, we're using a chunky yarn but this pattern can be done in any weight yarn just be sure and use the hook that the yarn suggests today we're going to be using this chunky beige and this chunky heather blue and these are from Burnash uh, uh, Burnett uh, Softy in chunky number five and you're going to need a skein of each <clears throat> which is about seven ounces altogether for the size that I'm making now I'm going to show you how you can make it in any size that you want we're also going to be using an end hook nine millimeter because we're using a chunky yarn so how do we adjust the pattern for any size let me move this blanket out of the way and I will show you. Now this is a free pattern on my blog and I'll put that blog link in the comments for you. Now here's a swatch that I made. And the way you adjust the pattern is four double crochets equal an inch and a half. And you're going to need four double crochets for each of your blocks across and then one row equals an inch and each row of a block is three rows so you're going to have uh, one inch is a row and four chains is an inch and a half and the way you adjust that is this swatch I wanted one two three four blocks and each block is four chains and the way, uh, the way you, you do that is um, you're also going to need to add an additional three chains on the end. But our first chain counts as a double crochet. So since I have 16 inches, one, two, three, four times four is 16, I'm going to chain only 15. So we're going to uh, go by four times four is 16 minus one is 15. And then we're going to add an additional three chains to begin with. And let me demonstrate. <clears throat> I'm going to use this blue to demonstrate. I have chained 15 plus 3 chains. And this is for our foundation row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Because the first three chains count as our first double crochet. And on this first row, we're only double crocheting across putting one double crochet in each double crochet. And by doing it this way, we will end up with 16 double crochets, which is my foundation row. Now, and if you want your uh, blanket to be bigger or small, uh, smaller, of course, because we're only doing 16, but um, for your demonstration swatch. But when you want your um, blanket to be bigger, you're, go you're going to need to add eight additional chains so that you get two blocks one going each direction and you'll see that once we get going um, in order to make it bigger so um, multiply four times however many blocks you want then subtract one and add three because like I said our first double crochet counts as a I mean, our first three chains counts as our first double crochet. Alrighty. I think you're going to find, once we get going on this, that it's not as complicated as it looks. Because basically, you're just stitching on either the front or the back post. Now, the next question is, what's the post, right? Alrighty. So, I got my last double crochet in. So here's my first row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 stitches. So now we're going to chain 3. 1, 2, 3. And now we're going to begin our back and, and front post stitches. So they're called posts because on your stitch, this part of the stitch right here on each one is called the post of the stitch. And so, we're going to begin 
We make sure what, which direction we're going first. Are we going to go on the back post or the front post? Let's see. We're going to start with the back post. Now, on your stitches, the front side is your front post. Your back side is your back post. Sounds relatively easy, right? Well, the first one here is going to count as our first stitch. So we're going to go on the back post. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go through that back post, yarn over and pull that stitch through, and then we're going to yarn over just like we do a double crochet. And we're going to do that only three times to begin with. There's two, and there's three. So it looks like this. We've got a little ridge. So the first of chain three counted as our first stitch, and then we did three back posts. So now we're going to do uh, four front posts. So we're going to yarn over, and we're going to we've used these all these. So we're going to go to the next post on the front and do the same thing, put our hook through, yarn over, and do a double crochet. And we'll do four of those. There's one, two, and I know when we're first getting started it looks a little wonky, but you'll see it start to lay out real pretty. This makes a nice thick blanket too. You can use this stitch for a blanket, you can use it for a scarf, a hat, um, a cup cozy, anything you want. The truth is anything that has a double crochet you can do front and back posts on it. Okay, so we did, here's our first four back post stitches because the chain of the three, chain three counted as our first double crochet. And then we did four front post double crochets. And you can see how it's starting to lay. So now we're going to do four back posts. So we're going to go to the back and do the same thing. There's three. One more. So now we have four back post double crochets. And now we're going to do the last four front post double crochets. One. Whoops. <laughs> Two. Three. And then our last one is that chain three that counts as our double crochet. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. There we go. So there's our first row. Four front post, back post, front post, back post. Okay, so now we're going to turn our chain three counts as our first double crochet. And then we're going to go to the back and stitch so that we're stitching the same direction. So we're going to stitch the three back posts because, let me make sure I explain this so you can see. The uh, first chain here, held my hand up too high. My first chain here is the same, counts as my double crochet. And then we're going to put a back post in those next three stitches. One. two, three, and it looks like two little lines there. And then we're going to do the front post. And now we're back to the back, the four back posts. 
There we go. <clears throat> I do suggest that you do a little swatch like I'm doing and practice if you've never done this. Um, it will give you a little bit more uh, chance to really look at it and get a sense of how the, the stitches go and where those posts are on your stitch. I know I did this stitch many years ago and I had no idea what the posts were. I just looked at a picture and tried to put my stitches where they had put them on. And um, I had been going through the stitch instead of around it. So once I learned it correctly, I was like, oh, that makes a whole lot more sense. Now my last stitch is going to be in the top of that chain three. Double crochet. Move that over there. And now you can see... Even though it's a little wonky, <laughs> they curl up a little bit until you get them out there and get a little heavier. Get them done. Okay, so here's our back posts. Here's our front posts, back post, and front post. And that's the way you would do it for the first row, um, for the first three rows for that direction. But now we're going to change it so that we're doing every other. This is a uh, uh, three rows and then we're going to switch now what I'm going to do is I want to use this blue yarn and show you how to change colors and attach it to the brown yarn so let's go ahead and clip that off now here we have um, the blocks you can see them how we did every other and we're going to go and do every other again but we want to change colors and when we change colors we don't do our chain three yet we put our hook through pull our new color in snug that down and I always do uh, chain one snug it down then I do my next two chains and then we can come back later and weave those ends in but if you snug that down good it will not come undone when you're trying to, to crochet okay so what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the opposite of what we did. So here we did three rows of front post. And so now we're going to do the first three chains is our first stitch. So we're going to go behind here and you can see um, the stitches right here. And so we're going to yarn over. Get up here, you can see it. Put our hook through right there and pull our loop through. And then do our double crochet and this gives us uh, our back side and helps us change direction oh wait I'm trying to go the same direction no that's correct <laughs> I looked at that and it didn't look right to me that is correct okay now we're gonna go in the back And we're doing it on the back side. Let me let me explain this a little better because I confused myself when I looked at that. Okay, so these were all front posts up here. And when we changed colors here, I just wanted to show you how to change colors. Um, and we're switching direction. And so our, uh, we were on the front side and now we're going to be stitching on the back side of those first three. So now we've been stitching on the back side for these four and we're going to stitch on the front side of these four. So yarn over and we're going to go through right here on the front side. And this is how we get our basket weave effect. There we go. And we're doing four of those. There we go. Like I said, it looks a little wonky when you're first going, but after a while you can really see the texture jumping out at you. Okay, so we did our chain three. We did three on the back of the of the back loops changing direction. And then these were back loops, and so we came and did them on the front. So now we're changing direction as far as front and back in order to get that effect. So we're gonna go on the back loops again, back here, yarn over, and go all the way through that post 
and sometimes you have to kind of get down in there and you know really loop around I do suggest when you're practicing to practice first with the chunky yarns just because it makes big loops and it's easy to see until you get real comfortable and then you know maybe go to, to some of the smaller yarns one two three we need one more on the back side all right and then we're going to do our last four on the front one two three four and chain three one two three now let's turn this around so you can get a better look at it here's where we joined and we're working in the back loops instead of the front loops here we're working in the front loops instead of the back loops we're working in the back loops instead of the front and the front instead of the back and um, I like the way this look when looks when the color changes how it makes these little loops there I think that looks cool so and that's how you change colors and how you go back and forth and you would do this for three rows and the way the pattern is written is double crochet the first row then two rows here and then after that you're going to do three rows one two three three rows one two three one two three of going one direction and then when you when you go the other direction you're going to do three rows of each as well and so that's <clears throat> excuse me and so that get, tells you about what size you know that it's going to be it's a good idea to take the yarn that you're going to use if you're going to make a blanket or whatever out of this and, and make a little swatch like this because it can really give you the idea of how it's gonna look now on this blanket over here what I did for the edges is after it was the size that I wanted it I tied off and then I attached um, and didn't weave in that in obviously <laughs> but I attached um, the opposite color at the corner and I because I did two colors and then I double crocheted down three double crochets in the corner then double crochet across and same thing and when I got to this side I switched to the other color and did the double crochet three double crochets in each corner around and joined back up here and then I switched and just did single crochet of the opposite color and that's how I kind of got that effect on these edges now it's the same pattern that's listed on my blog I just changed colors here just for fun because this is a blanket that I'm, I use in the car for my dogs when I have to take them to the vet. It fits perfectly on the seat and it keeps their toenails from scratching my leather. So, but anyway, that's the way you do the basket weave stitch and it's a fun stitch. <clears throat> it's a nice thick stitch and of course this is a chunky. And like I said, you can do this stitch in any crochet hook and in any yarn. Uh, the only thing I suggest is that you use the, the crochet hook that is suggested buy that yarn unless you want it a little more open and loose you know and also depends on your gauge so it's a, like I said it's a good idea to make you a swatch uh, so you can get an idea of how big the yarn and the hook you're using is going to make but don't let this this stitch uh, frustrate you um, just take your time and you know like at the beginning of this one I, I'm like oh wait I'm on the wrong place no I'm not I'm in the right place so sometimes you just have to kind of take it slow and really look at it study your swatches as, as swatch as you go and see you know really look at the stitches okay these are the posts when's the front the back you know and all of that but once you get going this is a great mindless project because once you get going this is a great project to take along in a car or sit where you're watching a movie because once you figure it out and you're going and you're and, and you're just like oh this is so much easier than I anticipated so anyway and also uh, make sure you use a needle and weave in those ends especially on a blanket um, because you don't want your ends to come out like that one did down there that I had earlier so anyway thank you so much for watching my YouTube video and 
And um, I hope that you'll make some of these. And if you do, post some pictures to my Facebook page. So have a great day. Thank you.